I just spit out my gum. <laughs> Sorry about that. I find it funny that this show has really made us keep track of the cars we do. Like, you know, most of the time we come into work, we do a job, we forget about it. I wouldn't even think about it. Now I go home and a couple days later I'm editing a video and I'm like, oh, and, and of course we do so many of the same cars, we're constantly thinking about trying to come up with new content in those cars to make this interesting. But then you have products. You know, like we install a lot of the same amplifiers, same radios, that's, that's normal. I mean, that's just gonna happen. But there's one product in particular that I just don't like and it's funny because we installed one a couple days ago. We're installing one again today. And we haven't installed one of these in months and months and months. And then, then two in like three days? Ugh, it's so funny. What are we putting in, you're wondering? No problem. This guy, this guy right here, Sirius XM. Now, for all you guys out there that want to add Sirius XM to your car. You can do it very easily by just plugging into the cigarette lighter, sticking the antenna on the top of the car, running some wires in, duct tape them up, do whatever you want to do, and bang, go. Naturally, when you come here or to most stereo shops, that's not how it works. We're going to install it like it's part of the car, which is why this drives me nuts, because you always have to find some place to put that little silly tuner. And of course, you know, we're going to put the antenna back here on the trunk lid, all that fun stuff. Enough of me talking. Let's take a look at this Honda Civic that we're working on now and talk about what the <laughs> We're talking. Talk about what the customer wants us to do. Okay, so Fernando's pulling out this pocket here because the customer wants to mount it right here where my hand is. So we're gonna have to make a mount that firmly mounts it here. Now the other request is that he wants to make sure that it comes in and out because he's gonna be using a docking station in his garage for the mount. So it's gonna sit basically like this. We just have to make sure it's over far enough this way because of that cigarette lighter. Not that we're plugging into it, we just need to make sure that the unit still slides in and out. Now another interesting thing about this car, and this is more of a pro tip of the day for all you guys that are aspiring installers and like to work on your friend's cars. Before you do anything on their car, the first thing you want to do, of course, you're going to start it up and look at it. This is important. Let me show you why. Where's the key? This guy right here. The dreaded airbag light. Now, when you go to work on your buddy's car, or your customer's car, or whoever it is, get in the car, train yourself to look at those lights. If it's a seatbelt light, if it's a passenger side airbag light, if it's a brake light, we get a ton of TPS light, tire pressure sensor, look for those. The reason why is because you don't want to start on a car. Now, most of the time the customers already know about this, or your friends already know about it, and it's not a big deal. But there's nothing like getting done with a car and that dreaded hollow feeling in your stomach of going, Light on. Was it on when I pulled it around? Did, did I do something wrong? What could have possibly happened? Th yeah, it sucks. Always train yourself to look at that, and then once you see it, go to the customer say, hey, or a friend and go, hey man, your airbag light's on. Like, oh, 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 oh. But that was pro tip of the day. So we're gonna start on this. Fernando is going to start getting the dash apart. We're gonna mount the XM antenna on this guy right here so that it is out of the way. Cut to Fernando. Unit in. Let's look at what an FMDA actually does. So we have this station right here. This is a fairly strong station. Okay, so it's coming in fine. We'll go ahead and we'll turn on the FM. So it severs the antenna connection altogether. So this, which is a strong station in our area, it shuts it right down. And then if you want to get it back, you just turn it off, power's down, and you're back to that station. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Uh, one of the main things, like I said earlier, was he wants to be able to take this out. He has a dock. 
so it clears everything just fine and then you can slide it right back in place. And as we said before, you know, it seems like a lot of effort put into a Sirius XM, and I, I would agree, but, you know, it's the little things, little things in life that make these people happy. And as long as the customer's happy, he'll refer a friend, and they'll refer a friend, and so the circle of life goes on. Bye, nice little Honda Civic. Bye. On to the next one. So the next car on the list is one that you've never seen us do before. It's so new and fresh. I don't think we've ever worked on one of these. <laughs> yeah, right. It's a Jeep. So what we're going to concentrate on today is something that we've done in a lot of videos and kind of glazed over, and that is prepping the dash for when you actually put the radio in. There's a few pieces that have to be removed, and we want to talk about those so that you guys have a better understanding of what it is that you need to remove in order to fit your radio in there perfectly. Because we've talked about making the dash kit, this one here, fit really nice around the radios nothing new there we've talked about how to flash your idata link maestro rr several times we've talked about eight and four as far as the speaker goes if it has an amplifier or not so you guys have all that we've talked about the bluetooth mic we've talked about all this you know that so but we've never really spent a lot of time talking about the dash itself so today we're going to show you what we do to the dash to fit the radio in fernando's already in the car Let's join him. So in every Jeep Chrysler Dodge, it has some form of mount for back supporting the radio. You could, you know, it has these things here. The radio slides in. The problem with it is, is it's not a doubled in opening. So when you go to put your doubled in in, it hits this. Now we have seen some people that have really pushed hard and got it in there, but that's really not the way to do it. In every Jeep, there's usually two screws. One on this side, one on that side. You take the screws out. Now some of them have wires that are attached here. Others don't. Others, it's really big and hard to get you can't get it out of the dash. You have to cut it in half and take it out one segment at a time. This is one of the easier ones. We just take that, we take that, this piece will come out. So Fernando's gonna do that and then we'll show you what we do next. This goes in the trash. All right, so now that we have the brace out, what we wanna do is this guy right here. When you go to slide your radio in, is it's gonna bow this up because this sticks down too low. Now you don't wanna just whack it off here and whack it off here because it's what holds the dash, the front of the dash together. What you wanna do is trim it up and then leave this whole back piece. You're gonna come up and then come across here and then come down so that this piece actually stays. To do that, we like to use an air saw. All right, so that's it. Just go ahead and remove this. All right, so then of course what you wanna do is just clean it up a little bit with your knife so that it's not all burry and nasty looking and you'll be able to slide your radio right in and of course the dash won't separate. So now let's check and see if this is a four or an eight so we can go over there. All right, there we go. This is a four, there's only four wires. These, these four wires here by my thumb are the ones we're talking about. So this has an amplifier. She's not gonna retain her Sirius XM, which is this one, but if she wanted to, SAT1 from iData would allow you to do that. And of course we have the antenna adapter for it. Now down here, this box right here. This is the Uconnect box. So what you want to do is come down and grab this cable right here. This is the USB that goes into the armrest. Now we'll be able to retain that, but we won't be able to retain that for Android Auto because if you've watched along, you know that we've had very little success using this one for Android Auto. And Android Auto is what she's going to be doing. And she's going to be doing it on the new Kenwood Exelon 6904F. Now the cool thing about this is even though it's a small screen, it's a 6.4 inch, which meets the minimum requirements for Android Auto. Pretty cool there. All right, so what we're gonna do so she can have Android Auto is we're gonna take out this cigarette lighter and we're gonna replace it with the USB DMA1 from Pack Audio. Now we spent a ton of time talking about the eight and the four on a pack harness, but I don't think we've ever talked about it on iData. And theirs is a little bit different. So let's take a look. On the harness here, you see these two clips. Okay, this is so that you can unplug and plug back in the speaker wires. Now let's take a look at a pack harness. If you'll notice, iData, pack. See how the purple and green are on top and the white and gray are on the bottom? Well, what this has to do with is that if you have the factory amplifier, we've talked about it before, we know that the purple and green are the actual inputs for the two, like we just showed you in the car. But here, they have the white and gray. And in the pack, what we'll do is we'll actually flip them. We'll pull these wires out and move them to here. Well, iData has just wired up the harness backwards from the get-go. Now, the reason why they do that, I don't know. But out of the box, it actually comes wired backwards. So if you're looking 
looking at the instructions right here, it talks about that. So you actually have to unplug these, flip them if you're doing an eight. Otherwise, what will happen is that the Bluetooth audio will come through the rear speakers and not the front speakers if you're using something like a Pioneer where the sound just comes out of the front speakers. So something to think about when you're hooking up the iData. Fernando's taking his Instagram photo. As you can see down here is the USB. This will be for Android Auto. And of course, USB 2 is located at the factory spot in the glove box. All right, this one is done. We have a Mercedes next. Oh, can't wait. All right, so we need to pull this Mercedes-Benz radio out. And to do that, you need a set of extraction tools. Just stick them into the radio here. Here. Just kind of do this. And the radio comes out. Now, if you want, you can check to see if this is an amplified or non-amplified antenna. So this would light up red. If it lit up red, we'd know that we needed the amplified. This doesn't, we can go ahead and continue to remove it. Now what we want to do is see if this is an amplified or non-amplified system by running a test tone into our speaker leads here. All right, so we get no tones. So that means this is an amplified system. Now, if you want a little bit more room to work behind the dash, the air conditioner comes out the exact same way. You just put these in here like this and pull the AC out. That'll give you a little bit more room if needed. He's also got this Alpine FM modulated changer. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out. Let's get to it. Now, amplified Mercedes-Benz systems are somewhat funny in that sometimes you need to use a harness like this that has the RCAs on it, add some noise filters because you want to keep the sound out. And then other times, even though it's an amplified system, you still actually want to go high level into the amplifier because you don't get any volume otherwise. Typically what we do is we go ahead and build this harness first, See if it works, if it does, golden. If it doesn't, we cut it back apart and we put the other one in. It's one of those situations that it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. Let's go ahead and build this one up real quick. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna go plug it into the car, and see if we get sound. See if it's loud enough, I should say. This one was definitely not loud enough, so we're gonna go ahead and grab a regular 1784. All right, let's take a look at both the 1784 and the 1784R because there are subtle differences. First off, the 1784 comes with these two guys here. One is a power antenna and one is an amp turn on because depending on what car you have, you might need to add these. This 1784R is made to go into Mercedes and it's pre-wired for that. And what you'll notice here is the red wire here and the yellow wire here. This is the Mercedes pin configuration. This is the generic pin configuration. You notice also this has the remote turn on plugged in and this one does not. So when you're using a 1784, if you just hook it up like it is out of the box, well, your radio will turn on, but every time you turn it off, you'll lose all your memory. And you start it up and the radio will reset because the memory and the ignition are backwards. So what you wanna do is repin them and then of course add in the remote turn on. So the yellow wire is gonna go up here next to the orange wire. And then the red wire will go back by the ground wire. All right, so now it's pinned for the Mercedes. Now we just go ahead and hook it up. So we have our harness all set. We have the cage off the radio. We have our antenna adapter in the car. We've talked about this before on these. When you put this into the dash, just bend up the things that you're actually gonna use. You don't have to put them all up. If the trim for the radio is located right here and this is a half inch away, don't bend this down. It's just silly. All right, let's get this in the car. All right, now go ahead and plug in your harness. Plug everything into the back of your radio. All right, let's go ahead and turn it on and see if it works. But you don't want to have the face on there when you're doing that. Now go ahead and put your face back on. Voila! And there you go. It's done, just like that. On to the next one. All right, so I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute, why did he just connect two factory harnesses together? And you'd be right, what, what am I doing? Well, we have a police interceptor here, and it comes with the silly factory radio. Fran, hold up the silly AM FM. Turn it sideways. That's like one of the first mechless radios ever. But what we're doing is he bought, show him the new one. He bought a factory CD player, and he wants to put that in. So we made a harness so that he can do that. Why not? Sometimes they're that easy. 
Gotta love it. On to the next one. So it's not all fun and games when you install. Between cars and you know when you have a break, you gotta clean up the install bay. Because you wanna make sure it stays presentable to everyone. You don't want the stuff to pile up. I mean, it happens, but you wanna try to avoid it. Ooh, pretty excited. Mail. Uh oh. Ooh, look at those. Now, the only reason why I open these at work is because they're my new work shoes. These are the old ones, as you can see. These things are, it's like nothing. They're going in the trash. And now we got these guys, nice and blue. Actually, we're blue socks today, too. Trash. Ooh, look at those. Yeah. I don't know about the rest of you guys out there, but when you get a new pair of shoes, don't you feel a lot faster? Fernando, what do you think? I think this one doesn't work. He's not paying attention. When you get a new pair of shoes, do you feel faster? I feel more comfortable. Good enough. Hey guys, thanks as what All right, guys, thanks for watching as always. We'll see it. <laughs> see you later next time. All right.